Hello my friend, today we're gonna train a little bit recursion. I know this is a difficult beast to tame, but with a lot of practice, this is gonna become easy vanilla, believe me. So we're gonna start with this first exercise, which is to write a program in C to print the first 50 natural numbers using recursion. So we're gonna do this with iteration and with recursion, trying to understand the overall differences. So I can do vim 50 natural numbers dot c enter as usual we have to include our standard input output and then as usual int main now i want to make the program interactive so we're going to use the scan f function i'm sure you know this function but if you don't you just do man scan f of course this comes from the standard input output header file and here we are this is the prototype of the function as you can see this is a variadic function because it can take a variadic number of inputs. I explained this concept in a previous video if you want to check it out. So the scanf function scans input according to a format. We have some conversion specifiers, essentially like the printf. The results from such conversions are stored through the pointer arguments. Okay, if any doubts, you can come here and read by yourself. So I'm gonna do int range, this is the name of the variable, and and inside this range, I want to put the upper bound of the values that I want to write because I don't want my program to be tight to only 50 natural numbers, but to be a program that is able to write whichever series of natural numbers. So here I simply say put s, insert the upper limit range value of, I go in the new line, I can do that, the natural number you want to see. Now put string is different from printf. I don't have to use the new line here because this is implicit. If we watch the manual put string, as you can see the function put string writes the string s and a terminating new line character to the standard output. So by default here we have the new line and this can be handy right if you want just to write a very fast string. And here we use the scanf function so scanf conversion specifier, we want a number, so percent %d for digit, and then we have to use the ampersand range, okay? Because scanf wants an address to put a value. So here I'm saying, take what is coming from the standard input and put inside this address, which is this variable here. Easy, right? Okay, then we simply do put numbers and we give as an input the value which is range. Okay, now we have to implement this function. So here at the top, I'm gonna put a prototype so I can define my function just beneath the main function. So the function doesn't return anything, void, the name is put numbers, and as an input, we have an integer, which is the range, the upper bound, right? Semicolon. So here we have the prototype. So first of all, we're gonna do with iteration. Iteration. So void put numbers int range. Cool. Well, here it's fairly easy, right? We create a variable which is int i. i is equal to one, the first natural number. And then simply I say while i is minor or equal than range, what do you do? Well, you just print f the value, right? And then you go in the new line. Then of course you just increment i, so we can do a postfix increment here, okay? Well, for the iteration, that's all there is. Uh, yeah, here of course I did a silly mistake, <laughs> which is this one, new line, which is not correct. I'm so tailored to put this new line that is always a, a reflex. Then I just run the program. I'm gonna say initial 50, and as you can see you have all the numbers. Super trivial, right? No need for explanation. Of course if I launch again, with 10, I have only 10 numbers. Now let's do recursion. So I'm gonna comment this. All right, so it's time for recursion. Okay, when I want to center the page in Vim, I do ZZ, lower ZZ. Okay, and we do the same. So I'm gonna copy the signature of the function, and here we are. Now, how can I think about a recursive function? First of all, I suggest to you to change the word recursion with repetition. Recursion is just another way to 
perform a repetition, essentially like an iteration. Indeed, you can do all the things with recursion or with iteration. It is really a tool in your toolbox. Now, the first thing you have to think when you do recursion is when is this recursion gonna finish? This is the first question you have to ask yourself. For example, here we have that the iteration is gonna finish when i is gonna be major than range, right? That is the ending condition for this loop. Here we have the same problem, basically, right? We have to say when this recursion is going to end. Well, when we have recursion, we want to use only the variable that comes with the recursion itself. So we have this range value. Let's say that initially we have the value 50 for the sake of argument. Of course, we can declare other variables, but we need to engineer the recursion when we have other variables inside and create maybe some helper recursive functions. But this is not the case. Let's make the constraints that we have only to use the range variable in this case. What can we do to solve this riddle? Well, initially the range value is gonna be 50, we said, right? But I don't want to write 50 initially. I want to write one, then two, then three. So I need a way to reach the value one. So TLDR, I need to make this range one. So I can say that my recursion, namely my repetition, is going to end when range value is going to be 1. So I can say if range is equal to 1, here if you follow me, you know that I prefer to do something like that because I don't want to have some assignments all around my code. So in this case, if range is equal to 1, what do you do? We finished our recursion, so we're going to print that value, okay? Print percent D new line range. Cool. Else, what do we do? Here we are inside a function, a clone function, which doesn't have the range value equal to 1, but another value. In our case, it's going to be a value between 2 to 50. So first of all, we're going to say put numbers. So we're going to do the repetition, put numbers, and range minus 1, right? We go back. We want to reach the value 1, the case base. So this is the recursive call. And then you're going to print your value. You are inside a function that has a specific value ranging from 2 to 50. So you're going to do basically the same command as the case base. New line, and you are going to do range. Okay? So this is the way I can do recursion in this case. I have a case base, and then I have a recursive case, right? Every time you're going to decrease the range minus 1, it's going to reach the value 1, and then we reach this case. Let's try to launch. So I'm going to run. Input is going to be 50. And as you can see, it works, right? We have all our natural numbers from 1 to 50. Now, this is not a cool recursion because I have to write two times the same function, as you can see here. And this is not a dry code. Don't repeat yourself. Usually, if you have to repeat yourself, you're writing a bad code. So what can we do? Well, let's delete everything. I'm going to do di curly brace, as you can see. Delete inside the curly brace. And I can say in this fashion, if uh, range is different from one, ask open, what do you do? Well, you call again, put numbers in this fashion and you say range minus one. So we have our recursion. And then ask open, what do we do? We just print F percent D new line. Okay. And as an input range. So three lines. Will it work? Let's try. And then we try to deconstruct. ZZ. So clear and run. 50 boom as you can see i have all my natural numbers from 1 to 50 so this is the same recursion as before but this time the code is dry right we haven't repeated ourselves so what is happening here and first of all let's try to do something like that dd and past here and let's relaunch the code but this time with the print at the top okay 50 boom as you can see i have all the numbers but this time in reverse from 50 to 1. Cool. Now, to understand recursion, it's always a good idea to have a visual grasp. That's what we are going to do now. So I'm going to ZZ, cat, 50. I'm going to copy. And we're going to go to C Tutor. I always suggest this website because it's very well done, especially to understand recursion and pointers. So we're going to copy our code. I'm going to remove this input output stuff. And I'm going to just say here 20. OK, let's do that. Okay, we start. As you can see, we have the stack here, and every time I'm gonna have a recursive call. So we start from 20, and I call another function with an input less, 
19, 18, and so forth, right? We keep calling until we reach this final case in which we have the value 1, you see? Now, here I have the condition that if range is different from 1, right? I am going to do a recursive call. So here I'm not going to have a recursive call, you see? So this function can very easily finish without calling another function, cloning himself another time, and we start to go back, right? We start to go back. All the functions that were waiting in the stack are going to be deallocated because we have finished. Now, the thing which is important to see now is that every function call, as you can see, has its own specific number, its own specific range value, right? We have 20, 19, 18. So every function, every call, every clone that we have called has its own specific value that we want to write. If I put this print at the top, the print is going to be performed while we are calling all the functions, you see? On the contrary, let's change this. If I move the printf just beneath the recursive call, what is going to happen? Well, we are calling all these uh, functions like before, essentially. But this time, as you can see from these arrows, we are never reaching the printf because every time we are going to getting a clone of the function before reaching the final printf. So we have all the functions inside my stack that are waiting for the case base, which is when range is equal to one, essentially here. And now we can go back because now range is equal to one. So we skip this recursive call and we do the printf of the last recursive call. You see? Next. So now we're going to print one, as you can see in the output, and then we go back. We have how many printfs we have to perform, you see? We have all these functions that are waiting in the stack with the printf. So we have printf, 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 all the printf, you see? Of all the functions that were waiting in the stack. So that is what is going on, you see? All the printfs. So if you understand the stack discipline, what is going on with the stack, allocation, the allocation, every time you create a clone of a function and every function needs to have a different input. Otherwise, the recursion is never going to end. It's like making an infinite loop. It's like not increasing i in my iteration here. So this is a way to solve this uh, very simple um, exercise, both with recursion and with iteration. Of course, it is far better to use iteration for this kind of problem. Why you have to make so many calls in the stack which is costly in terms of uh, time and memory, it's far, far better to use an iteration. But this is just for understanding the principles, so it is okay.